It's your man Jay Gray's report, and welcome to the College Football Weekly Preview, Week Seven. Y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Previewing the top five ball games of the weekend, so let's get right to it. Now this weekend is gonna be off the chain. We got all kind of ranked teams playing each other all across the board, from the SEC, Big Twelve, Pac Twelve boys going at it, and you got Duns coming off of bad losses. Trying to get back in the hunt. So let's start with the first ball game. Let's go out to the Pac-12. We got number 12, the Parliament Funkadelic. Going out to Pasadena to play number 18, UCLA. Now, here's the deal. The Parliament Funkadelic dropped 10 spots last week after losing the old Darvish Rodriguez and the Arizona Wildcats. <laughs> got out there and lost. Now, it's been seven years since the Parliament Funkadelic lost back-to-back -back ball games. They haven't lost three ball games in a row since since 2007, 2006, bro. It's, it's nuts. So now these boys got to show up, play big-time ball, and look, think about this. They were four and zero. They only had one turnover. Last week they had two turnovers. In one ball game. They played four ball games at the beginning of the year, only had one turnover. So turnovers were a problem. Also, coming into the uh from last week, Brett Hundley from UCLA got sacked ten times, bruh. They couldn't keep this done on his on his feet for nothing. I mean, he just he was laying supine most of the game. So in this ball game, I gotta go back. With the Parliament Funkadelic in the sweet uniform to get back on their feet. Even though they're playing on the road in a hostile environment, I think the Parliament Funkadelic wins this ball game. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, let's go down to the Red River Shootout. We go into Dallas. Texas State Fair. One of the greatest atmospheres of college football. You got the Texas Longhorns coming in to play the number 11 Oklahoma Sooners. Now, OU went to Fort Worth last week and got beat by TCU. T ran into a buzzsaw, bruh. It is what it is. But now, here's the pageantry of the Red River Shootout. They split the stadium 50-50 from the 50-yard line north. It's all red. The 50-yard line south, orange. Hey, it's a beautiful setting. I already talked to Bebo. Bebo is typically in the south end zone. But this year, Bebo, Bebo said, I ain't going to the game, bro. I'm not going. Hey, Bebo has taken his horns off for the year. He walking around Austin with a do-rag on and some house shoes. <laughs> Charlie Stroll and the Texas Longhorn come in. Two and three and dub. Every time you turn around, he kicking another boy off the team. They dub. Boys can't stop doing drugs. Can't. Can't stop doing foolishness, getting arrested, etc. Hey, Oklahoma got beat last last year by these dubs. Got upset. So now, coming off of a bad loss against these dubs from TCU last week. Coming off a bad loss from Texas last year. OU comes into this game ready to get back into the hunt for a national championship this week because if they can win and keep going and hopefully Baylor and TCU fall apart, they can get right back in the hunt. So, Bevo is going to be horns off, hooves up this weekend at his girls' crib. <laughs> All you wins this ball game. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got number two Auburn. It's going down to Davis Wade Stadium to play the number three Mississippi State Cowbells. Now, here's the deal. Dak Prescott and company coming in off of a big win. Beat the brakes off of Texas A&M last week. Hey, I'm going to tell you, Dak Prescott is the real deal. He comes into this ball game with 1,232 yards, 13 touchdowns. The last three games, he has had three straight ball games with over 200 yards passing and 100 yards rushing. He is the real deal. He's the ninth-ranked quarterback statistically in the country. Now, Auburn comes into this ball game undefeated. Offense is going to work. Nick Marshall and company doing what they need to do. However, defensively, they haven't been challenged. They haven't played but two quarterbacks in the top 100 all season long. So, even though Auburn is the real deal, 
The dumb Mississippi State Cowbells going to be in there irritating, them more, irritating these boys to death. As bad as, I, as it, it pains me to say, Dak Prescott and company going to upset these boys because they playing at the crib. They got college game day in town for the first time in history. So Dak Prescott and company upsets Nick Marshall and... And Auburn sends them to the crib. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got number three, Ole Miss, going to Kyle Field to play the number 14 Texas A&M Aggies. Now, Texas A&M got drug last weekend against Mississippi State. Now, Texas A&M, it's a very difficult place to go to Kyle Field. If you ever been to Kyle Field, it's one of the Greatest atmospheres in college football. One of the hardest places to play. Here's the problem Ole Miss runs into. Mississippi is Mississippi. <laughs> These dogs beat Alabama last week. They got the capabilities of winning this ball game. But here's the problem that nobody's thinking about when it comes to Ole Miss. Ole Miss had the biggest win in school history last week. Dogs are still partying at Mississippi right now. Coaches, players, administrators, everybody. These dogs are going to practice all this week. They sleepwalking, bruh. They got they, they hollering at women they never thought they'd holler at. They got boys knocking on their doors all week, telling them how good they are. You got ESPN cameras and Fox and CBS and everybody on, on campus shaking up their hands, talking about how good they are. <laughs> they hanging out again with women they never would have hung out with had they not won that ball game. <laughs> so they going to show up on Thursday night, Friday morning. We got a ball game to play, bro. We didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention in film study. They going to get down to Texas A&M and get the brakes beat off of them this weekend because they've already won the national championship. Their national championship was beating Alabama. Now, they going to get drugged this weekend. Watch what I'm telling you. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got the big ball game. Tell you what, this is the biggest ball game in the state of Texas. Typically, this weekend, the Red River Shootout is the biggest ball game in the state of Texas. Not this year, bro. You got number nine, TCU, coming in 4-0. Going down to McLean Stadium in Waco to play the number five Baylor Bears. Now, here's the deal. Bryce Petty is coming in trying to get these boys ready. This is the, only the third game that's being played at their new stadium. So, people going to be going crazy. It's the biggest ball game in Texas. It's a huge Big 12 rivalry. But Trayvon Boykin is the real deal from TCU. This done went to work on OU, put up 395 yards on these boys last week. They moved up 16 spots in the in, in the polls. Hey, I'm just saying, I saw it with my own eyes. TCU is the real deal. I'm putting everything I got on Trayvon Boykin this weekend. It's your man Jay Graves Report from the jgravesreport.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at jgravesreport so you can holler at your boy.